Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for our Wednesday encouragement. Hope you're having a great week. We had a fantastic vacation Bible school this past weekend. The kids had a lot of fun and we're grateful for all the volunteers who made it possible. Uh, it would not have been able to be something we could pull off without all of our great volunteers. A couple things before we get to our devotional thought. Uh, guys, make sure you sign up for our men's fellowship Saturday, July 8th. We'll have worship with Pete Wong, a devotion from Bo Barreto of Advancing Native Missions, and great barbecue and ribs. Now, there's no cost, but we do need you to sign up ASAP. You can do that by going to our website or our app. If you go to the website, you click on the Men's Fellowship graphic, uh, or you can scan the QR code on your screen. That's Saturday, July 8th at 11 a.m. And if you've never been to the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C., you've really missed something. There are exhibits on the impact of the Bible on our world. Uh, you can take an immersive tour through first century Nazareth. You can see ancient biblical manuscripts, learn about life in the Israel of Bible times, and there's so much more to the museum. And we're going to have a church-wide day trip to the museum on Saturday, August 12th. Now, the cost is $17.99 a person, and you can sign up and pay at our website. You just click on the graphic that, that mentions the trip. Uh, you can go to our app, or you can scan the QR code on your screen. Now, don't miss this amazing day. Well, sometimes the best of intentions can have the worst effects, especially when kids are involved. Last week, I was on Grunkle stand duty as our great nieces came to visit. And this time, the seven, six, and four-year-olds were joined by the almost two-year-old <laughs> who was spending the night for the first time with her big sisters. And, and she did great, except for one thing. Now, you have to know that these girls have at their home chickens, goats, rabbits, guinea pigs, and probably other assorted livestock they've adopted as pets. And they hold them and pet them and love on them as if they are pets. Now, I've not been a big pet person in my adult years. So when Spikes came to live with us a couple of weeks ago, I was kind of indifferent. But Christy said she'd take care of him and I haven't had to even feed him. So that's good. But when the girls came, they were excited. And the almost two-year-old, with the best of intentions, went to pick up Spikes and pet him and couldn't understand when we pulled her away. After all, she pets her animals all the time, and they've survived, at least as far as we know. Uh, so she had the best of intentions. She wanted Spikes to feel loved and cared for. But it could have been a disaster because, you see, Spikes is a fish, and, well, Petting them just isn't a healthy way to show fish that you care. <laughs> Good intentions have to be coupled with wise actions. Peter had the best of intentions when he pulled out his sword and defended Jesus when the soldiers came to arrest him. Jesus was God's Messiah, and to his mind, that meant that he'd protect Jesus, even if it meant killing a man and starting a violent battle. He was brave, he was loyal, and very well-meaning. But the actions that came from his good intentions would have served to make the situation worse had Jesus not performed a miracle by healing Malchus's ear. See, Peter didn't understand Jesus' role as Messiah and that he needed to endure his trial and crucifixion in order to accomplish his mission. And his mission was sacrificing himself for our sins. Peter meant well, but his good intentions led to harmful actions. You know, there are times when I've had the best of intentions in a situation, but ended up making that situation worse because the actions I took to carry out those good intentions weren't the wisest way to accomplish them. Sometimes we have the good intention of producing right behavior in a child, but we don't read the situation correctly and either give them tough love when they need understanding or we're lenient at a time when they need discipline. In my years of Celebrate Recovery, I've watched family members and friends enable destructive behavior in their loved ones by quote-unquote helping them with money or favors when they were in a bind. They meant well. They did it out of love. But it kept their struggling loved one from reaching the point where the pain of living as they were 
was greater than the pain required by change, and that just led to more self-destructive behavior. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. That's why having a prayer life where we're always in a conversation with God is so important because we'll be more likely to say, Lord, I'm thinking about this and it seems like the right thing from my perspective, but give me wisdom to know for sure. And we know that if we ask, he'll help. Too often, as James tells us in chapter four, we don't have that wisdom because we don't stop and ask God. He's eager to give it if we only ask. I'm looking forward to the next time the girls come to visit, and I'm glad the little one is able to come too, but I have to figure out something to do with spikes. I'll probably put him up high, but they have a history of climbing up to see things that interest them, and that could be a disaster of biblical proportions. Does anyone know a way to explain to a two-year-old that you just don't pet fish? <laughs> 